Alright guys, so we are now here sa second part ng ating solve problems for the fundamentals of fluid flow. So since we already discussed about the energy and head, so ang sasagutan nating problems ngayon is concerning um, potential and kinetic energy. No? So we have two problems here that we are going to solve today. So, let us start with problem number one, okay? So, in problem number one, we have a standpipe, 5 meters in diameter, and 10 meters high. And it is filled with water. Calculate the potential energy of the water if the elevation datum is taken 2 meters below the base of the standpipe. Okay, so, lagay muna natin lahat ng ating mga given information para mas madali natin siyang ma-visualize. So first, the diameter of our standpipe is 5 meters. Okay? So this is equal to um, 5 meters. Okay? And then, the height of our standpipe is 10 meters. Okay? So this is 10 meters high. And then, our datum is taken 2 meters below the base. No? So, let us write our datum line here, which is 2 meters below. Okay? So, let's say this is our ground. Okay? And this is located 2 meters below dito sa ating standpipe. So, from here to here is 2 meters. Okay? So, this is our datum. And our standpipe is filled with water. So, we have water inside our standpipe. Now, ang kailangan nating makuha is yung potential energy of water, okay, if the elevation datum is taken 2 meters below the base of the standpipe. Okay, so, we learned from our lecture about energy and the head that the formula for potential energy in relevance to its position is the weight of our fluid multiplied to Z, which is the position of the fluid relative to the datum point. Okay, so from this, we have two variables, which is the weight and the position. No? Well, we can get the value of C because we have the informations here that we need. We know the height of our standpipe and we know the location of the datum, okay, which is 2 meters below. So, itong weight natin, medyo hindi pa natin alam. So, let us try to calculate that first. Okay, so, we also learned before that our formula in getting the weight is equal to the specific weight multiplied to the volume of our fluid. Okay, so we are going to use that here. So, our W is equal to our specific weight. So, how are we going to get our specific weight? Our specific weight is equal to the density of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity. So, our uh, standpipe is filled with water. So, so, therefore, we are going to use the density of water. So, our formula for W by substituting itong ating specific weight na formula with density and the acceleration due to gravity multiplied to the volume, okay? So, our W is equal to the density of water, which is 1,000 kilogram per cubic meters, multiplied to the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so now we have here kilogram meter per second squared, so that means we have... Uh, Newton here. So, 1 kilogram meter per second squared is equal to 1 Newton. Okay? But our value will become obviously high because 9.81 times 1,000 will be 9,810. So, we are going to convert this to kilonewton. So, 1,000 Newton to 1 kilonewton. And so, nakuha na natin itong density and our acceleration due to gravity. Now, we're going to 
multiply to volume. So, what's the volume of our water? So, let us have it here. The volume of water is equal to, okay, so we have a cylindrical type ng ating uh, standpipe here, no? So, therefore, our volume will be pi over 4 multiplied to the diameter squared, okay? ng ating standpipe, and then the height. We are going to multiply it with our height. So, the volume of water is equal to pi over 4. Our diameter, which is 5 meters, so we have 5 meters squared, and then our height, which is 10 meters. Okay, so now we're going to calculate for the volume of water. Okay, so we have, okay, so we have pi divided by 4, then multiplied to the square of our diameter, which is 5, so 5 square, and then multiplied to 10. Okay, so we have 196.35 cubic meters, so yan yung volume natin, so this is what we're going to use here. We're going to multiply this to 196.35 cubic meters. Okay, so let us check our units. Our kilogram meter per second squared will be cancelled out here. Our newton will be cancelled out here. And our cubic meter will be cancelled out here. So, ang may sa atin is in kilonewton. Okay, so now we can get the value of W. Well, by the way, para hindi na tayo mahirapan, our 1,000 will be cancelled out also. So, hindi na natin isasama yan sa ating calculation. So, now we have 9.81, okay, multiplied to 196.35, which is equal to 1,926.2. Okay, so, 1,926.2 kilonewton. Okay? So, yan ang ating weight. Now, we will be able to get our potential energy because our formula is W times Z. So, we already know our W which is 1,926.2 kilonewton. Now, we're going to multiply that to our Z. Now, how are we going to get the value of C? Okay, so we have to take note that our weight here is the total weight of our water. Okay, so we should not be considering the whole height of our pipe, stand pipe, you know. Because we're going to uh, consider the location of our center of gravity. Okay, so on this case, dahil uniform ang ating cross-sectional area, Therefore, our center of gravity will be on the middle of our standpipe. Okay, so which is half of our 10 meters. So, therefore, our center of gravity here will be uh, considering 5 meters from here. And then, uh, since our datum is 2 meters below, so we will have here 5 plus 2 meters which is equal to 7 meters. Okay? So, yan ang ating i-consider na Z. So, therefore, here we will be multiplying it to C, which is 7 meters. Okay? So, what will be our potential energy here? So, I'm going to write that here para mas maluwag. So, our potential energy will be 1,926.2 multiplied by 7 which is 13,483.35. Okay? So, we have 13,483.35 kilonewton meters. So, yan ang ating answer here. This is our potential energy. Okay? So, now let's go to the next problem. So, neglecting air resistance determine to what height a vertical jet 
of water could rise if projected with a velocity of 20 meters per second. Okay, so ang given natin dito, we have a velocity of 20 meters per second. Okay, so now we need to determine to what height a vertical jet of water could rise. Okay, if we have this velocity. So ang hahanapin natin is kung gaano kataas, okay, yung ating water here. So we're going to look for this value. Okay, so one thing we learned even in our physics class, you know, that if we have um, situations like this, as the jet rises, its kinetic energy is transformed into potential energy. And neglecting air resistance, therefore, our kinetic energy will eventually be equal to our potential energy. Okay? So, we already learned our formula for kinetic energy and potential energy. Our kinetic energy is equal to one-half of our mass multiplied to the square of the velocity. And our potential energy, as we used earlier, is equal to weight times d, okay, the position of our fluid. No? We also know that weight is equal to mass uh, times the acceleration due to gravity. Therefore, our mass is equal to weight over the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so we are going to substitute this in our equation here. So we have one half, okay, multiplied to weight over the acceleration due to gravity, multiplied to the velocity squared is equal to weight times the z, no? the position of our fluid. Now, as you can see here, we have weight on left side and right side of our equation. So, we can cancel this out. So, ang may iwan sa ating formula, we have v squared over 2g okay, is equal to z. By the way, itong C natin dito is the position of the liquid, which is the same as the height that we are talking about here. So, actually, our Z is equal to the height. So, we can use that para hindi na tayo malito. No? So, we have our height, which is equal to V squared over 2G. Okay, so now we have all the values that we need. No? So, our height is equal to the velocity which is 20 meters per second divided by 2 times the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and I forgot we'll have to square this one. Now. Okay, so now we're going to calculate for the value of h. Okay, we'll use again our calculator here. So, 20 squared for our numerator, divided by 2, then divided by 9.81. So, we have 20.387. And what will be our sign here? So, we have... Um, meter squared on the numerator and the denominator will have second squared second squared so eventually um, this second squared will be cancelled out and we have meter here so ang matitira sa atin is meters okay so our unit here will be in meters so this is our final answer dito sa ating question Okay, so we will be solving more problems, so I will see you in our next lesson.